All right, continuing on with our streamlit introduction for generative AI. Now we're going to put do a whole multimodal chat bot. So kind of chat GPT like where you're just entering your your prompt and it's responding and you're going back and forth just like you're just like you're using Discord with somebody and you will be able to put images into this now. So if you look here we will go ahead and we'll run this. We will click run anyway, and it's going to basically bring up our chat application. And we'll see that it will grant access. We'll see that it has the ability to um, conduct a multimodal conversation. So let's let that run. And we'll go down here. We are going to go ahead and run this. This is our chat application. Let's see how it works first, and then I'll pop back in and show you how the code works. So I'm running it. What this will actually do is create a file called app.py, because we're going to run this actually in Colab and access the server through a tunnel. Look back at 10.1 if you want to see how to do that. We also have a little LLM utility that lets you use a variety of different chat servers. Now, not all these chat servers are going to be uh, multimodal compatible, so be aware of that. This is the configuration, though, for how we will make use of multimodal ChatGPT 4.0 Mini. We'll get our password. We'll get our password here, and we're going to run this part here, which is going to launch our server and open the tunnel so that we can get to the VM that's running inside of Colab for us. We'll Happy hairs return. Okay, so we'll run that. It always creates a cute kind of name. Some of them are a little sketchy. We'll run it. We'll put that in and click submit. And you can see this looks a little different if you've been following my earlier ones. We can now put a, a file there. We don't have to do that. We can just say, hello, how are you? Just like a normal sort of chat message. And it, it, it gives me a very robotic answer. We'll click Browse Files, and I'm going to put a picture of me there. And I am going to say, describe the image. Now, it, it, gets, a little, it gets a little scared to describe people. I mean, it does want to say, this is a man that clearly looks like he has a face for radio or something, a face for podcasts or something like that. It, it doesn't want to accidentally insult me. So I'll click send and it's, it's getting the image. So that's the image that I gave it. And it's now going to respond. The image features a man with a beard and glasses smiling at the camera. He is wearing a blue and black plaid shirt. Guilty as charged. Uh, in, in the background, there are shelves filled with books suggesting a scholarly or academic. Yeah, it's what I'm trying to kind of fake you guys out with. Uh, so, so yeah, it, it's, it sees right, right through my, uh, the lighting is warm and inviting. Well, I try. And highlighting his friendly expression. I'm just so friendly. I am. Anyway, that's, that's its description of, of me. And here we are going to look at the code behind this. So the code behind it, this is Streamlit. So realize this code, it's going to go through here a bunch of times. And the first time that it goes through, you've not clicked a button or anything. It's just drawing the initial state. Then when you click the button and send it, it goes through again. And you have to preserve that state because if you didn't, the next time you sent the next chat message, it would just start over and it would be responding to that and you wouldn't see any chat history. And that's no fun. So here what we do is you have to give it a parameter. It's server one that I'm passing in. And that just tells it that it's using this server one configuration. So here I can put in multiple different chatbots, providers, like right now we're just using OpenAI, but we can put the others in there. And it starts up. Now it says chat with image support. If there is no chat, connection in there, it goes ahead and establishes one according to that profile that I showed you below in the in the configuration file. We're going to display any existing messages that were in our current chat history. 
those are all stored in the state for streamlet. Now realize I say state and not session. If we were establishing a user session, then we'd have a cookie and we'd keep track of that. And you could click refresh and come back to the browser later and it would still, still be there. It'd be there until the session timed out, which is up to you. You can make those sessions last really, really long. We check to see if the user has entered um, anything. So we, we, create this, we create this chat form and we're giving it a prompt where you can enter it and that's just text input. And we're also giving it a upload file so that you can upload a file into it. We have a submit button. Once that submit button is clicked, then we're gonna build the response. So we're going to we're going to append the, the, the last prompt that the user typed in to the ongoing chat message. If there's a file, we're going to upload the file and we're going to put, this is how OpenAI and many of the others do, do multimodal, at least through, through Langchain that we're using. We're just adding in another part of the conversation. So the first part would have been, instead of, uh, instead of image, it would have been text. We get the message back and we're checking to see again if they're, if they're state so that we know to put that onto the rest of it. We get the response. We add the response onto the ongoing chat as coming from the assistant or the AI. And then we put the, we put the markdown response into the assistant pane, which is panel, which is, which is below all of the input area. So that's how it works. The large language model utility, all that is doing is just reading that config file that I give you here and basically just instantiating whatever class you asked for here with whatever parameters you're passing on. So this allows me to put all of the model specific information off in my config file and we can change that out and even define several of them without having to actually modify the code. So thank you for watching the video. If this was useful, smash that like button and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on all my other AI projects and other developments with this course. Thank you for watching.